Just how good are cheap speakers nowadays? Well, let's find out together as we take a look at one that I have been eyeing for a while now, the JBL Stage A190 Tower Speaker. The A190 from JBL is a two and a half way design that features a one inch aluminum dome tweeter that rests inside JBL's own HDI or high definition imaging waveguide with two eight inch polycellulose woofers. Together with its dual rear ports, give the speaker a reported frequency response of 36 hertz to 40 kilohertz with a sensitivity of 91 dB and a nominal impedance of six ohms, meaning that the JBL is going to be able to be powered by just about any amplifier or receiver on the market, which is what you want in an entry level speaker. Now, design wise, the JBL stage isn't going to win any awards for being unique. I mean, it's a plain matte black speaker that has obviously been designed and built with cost in mind. Regardless, I actually find its simple appearance and basic finish nice. The presence of rounded corners and contrasting white drivers give it a tuxedo-like look. Now, the plastic outrigger feet are absolutely terrible and do little to affect the sound, though they stabilize this large speaker quite a bit in order to keep it from potentially tipping. Those of you with kiddos should probably use them. Now, I hated the feet, so I got rid of them and replaced them with some isoacoustic ones. Now, before you start thinking the isoacoustic feet are going to be responsible for any and all praise I may give to this speaker in just a moment, don't. There was not a night and day difference in the speaker's sound quality using their stock feet versus the isoacoustics. I just prefer the looks and superior build quality, not to mention suction cup-like hold on hard surfaces, which is why I use them and feel that they're worth it. Do you need isoacoustic feet? No. Are they a nice accessory? Absolutely. I will add just one more thing. The JBL's threaded inserts for the included feet are not exactly straight, so the bit of flex that isoacoustic feet have meant that the speakers stood more level when using them versus the ones that are included. In terms of setup and equipment, the JBLs don't take a lot by way of associated gear. We drove them to concert-like levels using everything from receivers to separates, though I found the sweet spot to be our trusty Audiolab 6000A Play and, no surprise here, the Marantz 8015. Other solid pairings included the Onkyo 7100 and the Rotel 1582 Mark II. The good news is that you don't have to spend a lot to achieve good performance. As for the speaker's physical placement, they're not very picky with respect to toe-in or or things like that. This speaker has pretty impressive dispersion, so close together or far apart, straight ahead or slightly towed in, you're likely going to experience much of the same performance. If you find that the tweeter is a little too hot, facing the stage straight ahead will likely help. My only word of caution is to just be careful with the speaker's proximity to your front wall. The dual rear ports expel a lot of air, and as a result, it's actually pretty easy to get the bass to misbehave with this speaker. Too close to your front wall and you will no doubt think that the A190 sounds boomy or sloppy. So let's jump into their sound quality, shall we? Right off the rip, the first thing that jumped out to me was this speaker is bright. This surprised me. JBL, a Harman brand, isn't typically known for being bright, and yet when playing back at above average levels, but not quite to crazy territory, the A190 sounded, well, just all up in my face. Turn things up to 11 and Ouch. A quick sweep of the speaker's in-room response with RumiQ Wizard shed some light on what was happening. For starters, the JBL does not appear to be boosting the treble, at least not when measuring at our listening position. Instead, the JBL simply doesn't roll off as soon nor as dramatically as some other budget speakers, remaining pretty constant up until about 5 kHz, whereas other speakers, like for example the Eclipse 600 and Mark II we just reviewed, they begin to lessen their high frequency presence closer to 2K, which makes a difference with respect to perceived brightness. So while I would classify the JBL's treble as a little forward, it is easily curbed by using your amp or receiver's tone control and setting the treble to negative 1 to maybe as much as negative three. Doing this results in a far more balanced, less forward sound from the A190, one that I started to enjoy very much. Now, if you don't have tone controls, the included speaker grills will help lessen the treble presence, just not as significantly as what tone controls can accomplish. 
Now with the tweeter knocked back just a bit, the A190's high frequency performance was actually pretty good, possessing solid detail and air. Recordings with a bit of extra compression or plosives, take for instance Nirvana's MTV Unplugged, can still sound a little shrill in places, but overall the JBL proved to be a solid all-rounder in the treble department once adjusted. The mid-range was largely neutral. I didn't detect that the drivers or crossover were doing anything to monkey with the sound, though depending on where in the mid-range an instrument or vocal fell, it was possible to hear some cabinet resonance. For example, listening to my own voice through the JBLs sounded a bit more hollow or chesty rather than solid. I still sounded like me, so tonally the JBL was more or less on point, but the speaker definitely imparted a bit of extra reverb. This was exacerbated at higher volumes where the mid-range can pick up more coloration in the form of resonance, but again, tonally it wasn't as if instruments or vocals sounded different. So the JBL isn't lean or cool nor is it laid back or warm. It is neutral in its tone, just not the most composed with respect to its cabinet, which costs the speaker some detail and clarity in the mids, though I suspect some won't notice that much on account of the tweeter capturing a lot of attention with respect to detail. Down low, the JBLs are a punchy AF. These speakers can and will charge a room with bass, just don't expect them to be the most resolute. But Damn it if it's not good fun, especially with movies. I will never say that any of Michael Bay's Transformer films are great, but they can be a lot of fun and a nice way to show off your home theater, and to that effect, the JBLs were up to the task. In our room, the speaker hit 30 hertz, which for some of you translates to no sub required. Though if you want taut, rich, detailed bass, I would advocate for a sub, and I would likely cross one over with the JBLs between 60 and 80 hertz. Go below 60 hertz, and the JBL just starts to get a bit loose with respect to control. As for soundstage, the JBLs are capable of creating a vast wall of sound, one that easily says, to hell with your room's boundaries. The wall is so wide that the speakers themselves have little trouble disappearing in it, though, and this may come as a little surprise, if you are looking for accuracy or nuance, the JBLs are good, but not great. Dynamically speaking, the 190s, tons of fun. The speaker can be positively explosive, so if you're looking to recreate the sensation of a large commercial theater on the cheap, definitely take note. When it comes to home theater, the JBLs are fantastic. As for comparisons, I don't believe the JBL 190 towers are going to walk away with a W in any particular category. While I enjoyed my time with them, and I do not regret buying them at retail, these are not Klipsch RP-8000F nor Polk Audio R700 Slayers. Now, I know a lot of you are likely about to type, oh, what about the Klipsch reference or even their Synergy line? I have not heard any speaker from either series recently, as in within the last two years, so I don't want to comment and potentially give you bad advice. Suffice to say that on paper, you would be right in considering the JBL alongside either line from Klipsch. At roughly $600 a pair, the JBL deserves to be cross-shopped along the likes of, say, the Yamo S809, which are currently cheaper than the JBL and, to my taste, look better and are surprisingly even better constructed. Now, the Yamos are a lot like the JBL in that they're fun and able to be enjoyed easily, which for their low, low cost is really what speakers like this are all about and why I advocate for the S809s, but these will not best speakers at twice their price. Sorry. That said, would I rather have the S809s over the JBLs? Yes, because I simply prefer their sonic character and less boomy bass. Now compared to the Fluence XL8F Tower speakers, I'm going to have to side with the Fluence. Both the Fluence Towers and the 190s represent good value and just great entry points into the hi-fi in home theater hobby. The XL8F is a more refined speaker, both sonically as well as visually, though I am not saying that the Fluence is better constructed. Both speakers are largely hollow, and as a result, both have notable resonances in and around the bass and low mid-bass region. That said, at basically the same price point, I think you're getting just a little bit more for your money with the Fluence. In the end, I half expected to be sitting here telling you all about the ways that the JBL Stage A190 Tower is just better than its price tag and reputation would have you believe. But I'm not, and I won't. And that's okay. It's okay that the JBL is a value-oriented speaker and for the money delivers a competent performance worthy of what you spent. I don't regret buying them. If you're on the market for a speaker that will provide you with a big, bold, 
punchy sound that will no doubt grab you and maybe even your neighbors, then definitely consider the Stage A190. If you're looking to put together your first home theater without going broke in the process, the JBLs will definitely get you there. But if you've been eyeing the Stage Series, thinking they're the next Sony punches well above their weight class type speaker, well, I got news for you. They're not. But then again, neither is the Sony. So that's it. That is now my take on the JBL Stage A190 Tower speaker. But before we sign off, I wonder what Christy thought of it. Okay. I'm sure this is going to surprise a few, few of you, but okay. I love the look of these speakers. And no, I haven't been body snatched. <laughs> to me, this is how you do understated affordably. Yeah. I am obsessed with the matte finish. Mm -hmm. Seriously, can we please let piano gloss finishes be a thing of the past? I'm begging. <laughs> I'm begging you guys. I'm begging the the hi-fi industry as a whole. Yeah. Please. Um the embossed stage logo that sits on top yeah. is such a simple touch and tells yeah. me that maybe there are some folks at JBL who are a little bit more in touch with <laughs> things like modern typeface and branding, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, the white drivers, love them. They're some of my favorites. I just, I like that how they, they contrast with the matte black. Yeah. Um, totally with you on the feet. Those things were hideous. Uh, the ISO acoustic feet really make them look expensive. And I, yeah, yeah I get it. Nobody's going to do that, but. I mean, you it, can, but yeah. It, that really, like, the, just the entire picture for me, mm -hmm. you know, the complete package with the ISO acoustic feet, chef's kiss. Okay, sound. <laughs> now, when we first got these, I was like, these are some of the most Jekyll and Hyde speakers I've ever heard because, we, you know, we put three different songs on there, like Mission Impossible, mm -hmm. the Seville track, Robin's Honey, and some some something from Dave Matthews' band. I don't know. <laughs> what something you picked it might have been dancing nancy's i can't um, remember anyway i felt like i was hearing three different speakers as each of those tracks changed mm -hmm. but once you dialed in the treble or whatever it was that you did mm -hmm. i i don't pretend to really know what he's doing when he's manipulating stuff guys but they really balanced out for me yeah not perfect but at least they were a lot more consistent yeah I think they're a ton of fun as a home theater speaker. Yeah. Not a lot of nuance or anything, but if you want that big, big sound, mm -hmm. these are going to do it. Yeah. Um, I will say that the treble that, you know, that sort of extended treble mm -hmm. that you were speaking about mm -hmm. really helped me with understanding dialogue. So I, 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 I give them points for that. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, any hearing issues that I think yeah. these would be good for that. Yeah. And I think this is going to really shock a lot of people, but I would buy these, and this is going to probably, uh -oh. we'll never get a, another pair of JBLs again, but okay. I would get these over the L100. What? I just was never really a fan of that speaker. I mean, I think that it's cool as hell. I mean, it's like the styling is completely on point. I love the vintage look of it, mm -hmm. but it was not, it's just was. It wasn't it was, your cup of tea? No, it was kind of boring. Okay. Um. <laughs> it just, well, it didn't, it didn't do it for me. And I think maybe it's because I have a tendency to like brighter speakers. Yeah. You so do. It, it makes sense mm -hmm. given what you've said about the JBL stage, mm -hmm. uh, that, that I guess that I would like these. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, you know, uh, come for me in the comments. I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as other comparisons go, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I love Yamo, I still think I would get these. Ooh, didn't yeah, see that I'm, coming. Yeah, I, and I didn't think you would, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe my tastes are changing. Maybe I'm just becoming, you know, more of an audiophile. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I will say this though about the Yamos. Um, if you know that you're going to use a subwoofer, then I think the Yamos make a lot of sense. Um, but if you're trying to get away with just a simple two speaker or, you know, you want to maybe not have to use a sub because maybe you have neighbors or you're worried about too much bass translating, then these are the better purchase over the Yamos because they do have better bass response. I'm not going to say that the bass response is like super nuanced or anything like that, but they do play deeper with more authority than the Yamos. Yeah. And that's exactly what I was going to say. I oh, think sorry. You, I didn't. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Okay. I, I think you get more bass. You do. Uh, with them. Mm -hmm. And I think they do perform better in a home theater setting. And I'm one of the types that you're talking about. I don't, 
I don't really ever want to have to have a subwoofer. Mm -hmm. I get that they work and they're important. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of people that would never dream of having a system without one. Mm -hmm. I'm not that person. Uh, flu wants Mm -hmm. easy, easy. I'm, I'm getting the JBL. Yeah. Uh, I really liked the flu wants bookshelves. Oh, Um, yeah. Oh, but I mean, that, okay. That's a different speaker. I know. Just let me finish. I really like the bookshelves, uh-huh. uh, but I did not care for the towers at all. Mm-hmm. So easy pick the stage. Okay. I am absolutely 100% with you on those Sony speakers. I do not understand their appeal beyond being like practically free. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. I definitely get that. But beyond that, I don't get it. You yeah. can get a lot better for not much more. And if you like them, great. That's awesome. You know, like we always say, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So if you're into them, cool. The sudden infatuation with them, I I don't understand. Yeah, and if I can just interject a little bit, like because we never officially reviewed that speaker. We had them. We had them, and you know, we got them. And the reason we didn't give them a full review is partially just because, um. I just didn't want to, like, I didn't feel that their performance was worthy of going on for 12, 15, 20 minutes about. But we have included them in a lot of um, comparisons. And we even showed them, shot some B-roll of them and whatnot. And in our comparisons, I mean, we pointed out a number of speakers from Fluence. And uh, I believe it was Q Acoustics at the time that were only marginally more expensive than the Sonys. I'm, I'm not talking about their sale price, but were only marginally more expensive uh, than the Sony's that provided you with, in my opinion, loads better performance. Um, and I would probably go not to out mention on, better build, better build quality. And I would go out on a limb and suggest that it's possible that the stage bookshelves, I, the model number escapes me. Uh, I'm seeing those online for just a few dollars more than the Sony's. And I would say, based on my experience of the one nineties here, you're going to get a better speaker. And even that stage bookshelf, so there, I'm with you. I don't quite understand um, the sudden infatuation. I get things being affordable, but how it's gotten the best of all affordability type crown doesn't make any sense because twenty five dollars, give or take, here or there, I can. There's there's plenty of options. I uh, yeah, I totally agree. The one thing, the one speaker that I think people are gonna, I know people are gonna ask you about. Mm. Uh, is the Heco, the Aurora? Oh. It's pretty similar in price. So what is say it? you? I thought the yeah, I thought I the think... Auroras were like eight hundred a pair. Um, which I guess I is close to six hundred. Think so. I okay. think they're actually in the five hundred range. I mean, they're more expensive. Yeah, but I get your point. Than the stage, yeah. but they're they're close enough. Okay. I guess that look, people are gonna ask, so just give them ex- give them what they want. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, the Heco Aurora seven hundreds because those were the ones we had. Uh, are the better speaker. They are. Um, I think you're going to find a slightly more nuanced presentation top to bottom. You may not quite get as full sounding of bass, but the bass that you do get is going to feel a lot more textural, a lot more detailed, and potentially, potentially a little bit more punchy without um, so much boom, so much of that extra resonance around it, that tight bass. Um Treble-wise, they probably have a lot in common, to be honest with you. I don't have the 700s here in the room to do like an A to B, so I am working off of memory in my previous notes. Um, Treble-wise, they're probably going to be a little bit similar. If not, I believe the Hecos may actually roll off a little bit sooner compared to the JBLs, which, while those speakers are spirited up top, may seem a little less spirited than these. Uh, mid-range, probably largely the same, though you will not encounter quite the same level of resonance because of the cabinet uh, in the Hecos than here. The Hecos do have a little bit more bracing, and that matters, but that's also what you're spending your money on. So the Heco Aurora 700, at least, is better, in my opinion, than the JBL Stage A190, but you are going to pay more for that. Cool. Well, thanks. Okay. Hope that... I think hope that I, answered everybody. Oh, I think sufficiently, yes. Okay. All right, that's it. That's it? Uh-huh, that's All it. All right. Well, that is now our review of JBL Stage A190 Tower Speaker. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. It's kind of helped me out, and that is what other speakers around the JBL's price 
should we also check out? Anything, everything's on the table. Let me know. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, or you leave us a super thanks, or you become a member, all three of these ways, along with just watching and hitting the like button, show your support for this channel, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.